Hello, and welcome to our Signal 4 onboarding series. So far, we've gone over the ability to sign up for a Signal 4 account and download the app, as well as inviting users and creating teams inside of Signal 4. The next question we have to ask is, how can we efficiently integrate our existing systems with Signal 4 to ensure timely alerts and effective incident management? In order to do this, what we need to do is we need to create incoming endpoints inside of Signal 4 to receive events from our third-party systems. So what we need to do is we need to go ahead and go down to our Integrations Hub, which is our Integrations link down here. And inside of here, we have a number of options. What we need to do is we go over to our Gallery, and this is a list of all of our different connections that we have enabled for Signal 4. And we have a, a number of two ways with specific services, such as Dynatrace or Freshdesk or Kasaya. However, we also have the generic systems down here for webhook and email. And what these are going to do is they are going to create an endpoint with a specific address, be it email address or a webhook address, that you can send events to. And once these are created and events are sent to these endpoints, those events will automatically create alerts inside of Signal 4 and send those to your on-duty personnel. So let's go ahead and see this in action here. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and create ourselves a new webhook inbound endpoint. So when I click on the tile, it's going to expand out some new fields down here and enable me to create my webhook. So the first thing I want to do here is give it a name. And for my purposes today, I'm just going to call this the webhook endpoint so we know exactly what it is right off the top of our heads. Our next option would be to give it a description, and you can again give it any description that you would like so that you can know at a glance exactly what this webhook is for. And then underneath this, our next option here is enable team ownership. Now what this does is this allows this endpoint to be specific for any one team. So if I enable this, it's going to ask me to choose a team and whichever team I choose, we'll see that this automatically gets added down here at the bottom as a distribution team and it won't allow me to add any additional teams. That means any event that comes to this endpoint is going to go to this one team only. You cannot add any additional teams to this endpoint if it's gone by this team ownership. So what I'm going to do for our purposes today is I'm actually going to turn this off so that we can have these events go to multiple teams if needed. Next up, we'll see the URL field and we'll, we'll create an endpoint URL after we install the app and it's saved. So now the other option here is we would be to add and or remove our teams. So we have the X there. I can remove the team that was automatically added because of team ownership. Or I could come down here and add the teams in manually, and then that allowed me to send events to both of these teams by default. As a note, we don't have to add in teams here, but by adding the team in here, we'll actually create a distribution rule by default that will send any events that come to this endpoint to these two selected teams. In addition, we have the option to choose a manual category for these alerts to send these alerts always to one specific category, or we can use the default option of the keywords, which means that when the event is sent in to Signal 4, we are going to process the event and filter it through all the keywords in the event in our categories and see which category is the best match for this event via the keywords, which is where we're gonna keep this for now. So once I have all my settings enabled and set correctly, then what I want to do is I want to go ahead and click on the install button at the top. What we'll see here is this automatically takes me over to my installed apps page and will automatically open up the new installed, in my case, webhook endpoint with the details of this item. And we'll also see here that my URL is now present. And if I needed to, I can actually come in here and edit any of these options that I need to edit, and that would enable me to change around as needed. So now that we have this created, I want to go ahead and send a test event just so I can see this enter our system and create an alert. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy my URL here, 
And then I'm actually just going to open up a test program here, which we use here called Rester. And I am going to send an event into our system. So as we see, I've entered in some JSON into my body and I've entered in the post method and the URL for my endpoint. And if I click on the send button, we'll actually get a 201 letting us know that the send was successful. And we'll see on my phone app that I actually have a new alert down there. And if I switch back over here to my integrations page, we'll actually see if I click on the incoming events, that'll take me to the events page and it'll show every event that hit this new endpoint, which in our case would only be this one at this time. However, if I expand this out, we'll see even though I went to one endpoint, I have a distribution rule here that for two different teams. So the one event actually created two alerts, one for each one of my two teams. And if I go back to my installed and my endpoint, we'll actually have a link to our distribution rules here as well. And if I click on this link, this will actually take me directly to the distribution rules with the filter of the endpoint letting me see the distribution rule for this endpoint. And in this particular case, I have the one rule that is sending to two different teams off of no criteria, which means any event that is sent in will automatically be sent over to those two teams, which is the default option. And we'll get more into adding criteria and the distribution rules in our next video for targeting specific event routing. So now that we've created a webhook endpoint, now let's go back into my gallery and I want to go ahead and show a creation of a email endpoint as well and show how we can use that in addition. So again, if I click on the tile, it expands out. So we give this new endpoint a name as well. And for my case, I'm just going to call this my SMTP endpoint and I can give it a description in addition. And then again, we have the option for enable team ownership. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and turn on the team ownership so we can see this in action with team ownership turned on as well. Below that, we'll see that the email address will again be created after we actually install and it creates the endpoint. And we'll see here now we have our team that is mandatory because we chose the team ownership, but I can still change whether or not we use a specific category or the keywords. So in this case, I'm actually going to choose a category in addition so we can see everything in effect. So I'm going to choose the radiation category just so we can see that. Now I'm going to go ahead and click on the install button. And again, I get taken over to the installed apps and it brings up my specific app that I just added. And now we see that we have the email address for this app. In addition, you'll notice that team ownership is enabled. Events generated can only be routed to the selected team, which means I cannot take an event from this email and route it to my sec ops team. It has to go to the IT ops team. So now what I want to do is actually want to click a, take a look at this distribution rule that was created for this by default. So if I click on that link again, it brings me back over to my distribution rules and we'll see the endpoint rule. And we'll see here that it is again set to none, which means that any event that comes into this endpoint is going to create an alert no matter what information is included in the event itself. And we'll also see here that I, again, I can't add any new teams because the team ownership is enabled. So what I want to do is I want to go back to my installed and go back to my endpoint and I want to copy my email address and then we're going to actually send in a new alert via email. So we'll see here that I've created an email. Um, we're just going to subject of critical issue and then I put in some information and I've input my endpoints email address as we can see inside of the installed app. So once I send this through, we'll actually see a new event come into my phone here. And as we see, a new event just came into my phone. And if I click on the incoming events, we see the event came in. It hit the SMTP endpoint is where it came in through. And we see that a signal was created, which means an alert was created. So I go back down to my IT apps and we'll see here that it went into the radiation category because we specifically chose that. We'll also see that it uses a specific distribution rule to send the event. And in this case, it's the distribute all under the SMTP endpoint as that's the default rule created. And in all cases here, if I open up on my phone, we'll see all three alerts. And even though two of these come from the same event, 
they went to different teams, so they created two separate alerts, which is my two bottom teams here, the purple and the red. So if I go ahead and open up the red, we'll see here it's the critical problem with the database error, and we have the signal raised. So I'm going to go ahead and acknowledge this alert, and then I'm going to go back over here, and I'm going to open up my second one, and it's the same exact alert, just with a different team, because it's all from one event. And I go ahead and acknowledge that one. And now my third option here is the one from the email. And we see from the email that I sent, it includes all that information in there, as well as who sent the email, where it came from, in the details. And I'm going to go ahead and acknowledge this alert as well. And then we'll go back and we'll see all three of my alerts are acknowledged. So this is just a brief rundown of how to create a new endpoint inside of Signal 4 using our integration hub under the app gallery and sending events into these endpoints to create alerts inside of Signal 4. Thank you for joining us in our Signal 4 onboarding series and have a nice day. Goodbye.